Huge thanks to my exclusive Computex sponsor, ASRock. I use an ASRock Tai Chi Ultimate motherboard in my personal rig and I absolutely love it. So make the right choice for your next build and get yourself an ASRock motherboard. Links are in the description down below. <laughs> Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy and today we're talking about the Ryzen 5 3600. Before we jump into that, I just want to say if you haven't entered my ASRock GPU giveaway then definitely check out that video, it's for an RX 590, of course that's a very solid 1080p gaming graphics card. Uh, so if you want to be in to win that then go and check out that video and you'll see how you can enter in to win that graphics card. So yeah, today we're talking about the Ryzen 5 3600 because we've spoken a lot about the Ryzen 7s, the new ones, and the Ryzen 9. Uh, but we haven't so much talked about the Ryzen 5s. Now we've got some more information coming out about it and it's looking like the 3600 is continuing the trend of being exceptionally good value for money like what we saw with the 2600 and of course the 1600. So if you do not know, the Ryzen 5 3600 is coming with a 3.6 gigahertz base clock with a 4.2 gigahertz boost clock of course it's six core just as you would expect a nice big fat cache there that's always good to see and a tdp of 65 watts so those clock speeds are the same as the 2600x and it's coming in at a price tag of 200 us dollars which is that's really uh competitive i think that's a very good price the 3600 is a similar affair, it's just got a bit higher clock speeds, 200 megahertz on the base and uh, an extra 200 there on the boost to bring it up a little bit higher than the previous generation. Of course the TDP goes up and the price has also gone up. But the 3600 there still looks like the better value to me and with the previous generations there was a bit of movement in price and I think uh, the 2600X did start to become better value as it went along with the price changes. Uh, but looking at this pricing, the 3600 looks really, really good to me. So we have seen some benchmarks leak out with the 3600. And you can see in Geekbench, it's actually doing pretty well. <laughs> it's really solid. So it's actually beating the uh, 1800X, which is really impressive. If we read the article uh, from WCCF Tech, but it's been widely reported, it says, for a comparison, the Ryzen 7 1800X scores an average of 4,400 points in single and 24,000 points in multi. The 8700K scores 5,400 points in single, so it's basically matching, and 2,500 points in multi-core, which is actually a bit lower, while the 2600 scores 4,700 points in single and 23,000 points in multi-core. That's really good. That means it's going to be matching the 8700K, at least in this benchmark. Uh, in single core and it's beating the 1800x wow that's really phenomenal this just shows how much of a jump these new uh, Zen 2 CPUs are like the 3600 is coming with this type of performance at 200 US dollars that is just such a good deal the article continues by saying moving on we have various entries of the Ryzen 5 3600 and user benchmark which shows that the Zen 2 has some serious IPC advantages over Coffee Lake processors when compared to a 7700k the chip that was the flagship of the KB Lake lineup the Ryzen 5 shows a 7% IPC lead as found out by a reddit user so you can see there the calculation they've done and that's crazy so it has a seven percent advantage in ipc single threaded if they were both set to uh, 4.05 gigahertz seven percent over kb lake now you have to remember that this architecture it's basically the skylake architecture was introduced in 2015 and that's more or less stayed similar they've made optimizations um but they've pretty much i mean to be fair to intel they've really stretched the life out of it as far as they possibly could it's actually impressive uh but the problem is is that amd are just they're just leaps and bounds ahead and it looks like that's going to continue because of intel's trouble heading to 10 nanometer it's like they they would have rather if you look at the old roadmaps i mean they should have been on it by now so it seems like it's just been out of kind of like desperation that they've managed to <laughs> extend the life of their 14 nanometer chips for as long as they have and optimize them to such a degree uh which as i said is impressive but 
it's, it's starting to kind of like wear thin, especially with the prices as well. So the fact that this 3600 has a 7% IPC advantage over a 7700K, that is seriously impressive to me. There was also another leak from Chip Hell, where there seems to be a lot of leaks around Zen 2 lately, or Ryzen 3000, which shows the Ryzen 5 3600 beating the Intel i7 8700, not the 8700K, the 8700 in PUBG by an average of 6.3%, with a maximum FPS gain of about 10%. And that was with a system running a 3000 megahertz memory and an RTX 2080 Ti graphics card. So that's, yeah, really good. I think, so a lot of people out there were buying CPUs, not so much the 8700, although some people still did, but like the 8700K, uh, because it was good value. F it was not as good value for money, but it did deliver very good performance for the money as far as the Intel chips go. Uh, definitely much much better than the 9900k and even the 9700k so a lot of people did buy those 8700k's especially people interested in overclocking they would take them up to 5 gigahertz which was very achievable on them uh, if you knew what you were doing and that would be a very solid gaming cpu but if the 3600 is going to have this performance at 200 us dollars then i don't think anyone's going to be buying things like the 8700k anymore the 9700k as well so yeah i find this really interesting and uh, i can't wait for it to come out i think these ryzen 5s are really going to be sort of like the nail in the coffin for this generation of cpus of course the 3700x 3800x are very impressive and the 3900x as well especially for people who are going to be doing you know productivity and gaming like myself we're we'll very interested in those cpus but for the average person out there that's just doing gaming, you know, they, they can't, they're not, maybe not an enthusiast, more a mainstream user, they don't want to spend all that money, then things like this Ryzen 5 3600 are going to be extremely good. And I'm just so impressed with what AMD has done with this generation. It really is impressive. Now, one thing that was interesting looking at this poll that they had on the page was that very few people are actually interested in the 3800X. We'll have to see once we get them to review. It is a very interesting CPU. It kind of reminds me back to the Sandy Bridge days where you had the i7-2600K, which a lot of people bought, and the i7-2700K. The CPUs were identical except a 100 megahertz bump up for the uh, 2700K, both on the base and the turbo frequency. And that seems to be exactly the same with this 3800X, which just has the 100 megahertz bump up. Although the TDP does jump up quite dramatically. So uh, maybe there's something going on there with the boost. Maybe the average speeds will be considerably higher. We'll have to see that once we actually review it. There'll be something going on there. Uh, but of course, it will be uh, unlocked anyway. So you could just grab that 3700X if you're comfortable with overclocking and then take that as high as it'll go, which we uh, covered in the previous video about rise and overclocking. So yeah, it's it's looking really good. I'm quite surprised that the most popular one was the 3900X. I guess there are a lot of enthusiasts that are interested in it. I mean, it's not, I, I wouldn't say it's overly expensive at 500 US dollars, especially considering what you get. I mean, just think a few years ago, we were having to pay a thousand US dollars just to get, you know, a 6900K, which was an eight core uh, Intel CPU. And it, it didn't have any, type of the speeds like these ones do you know i think they went up to 4.2 out of the box uh so yeah this is looking really really good but i want to throw it to you guys right now out of the lineup both the all of the ones i showed you here today the ryzen 5s the ryzen 7s and the ryzen 9s of the new 3000 series which one is the one that you are most likely to buy so for the people that are in the market or waiting for these to come out which is the one you really want i'd really like to know in the comment section down below now, I thank you all for watching this video. As I said at the start, be sure to check out my ASRock GPU giveaway. I definitely want to enter in for that, uh, to win that. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.